This lecture will cover acetaminophen toxicity. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to describe the metabolism of acetaminophen, identify the key toxic metabolite, describe the clinical presentation of acetaminophen toxicity, and discuss the treatment and antidote for acetaminophen toxicity. We will start with a general discussion about acetaminophen and then talk about its pharmacology and metabolism and how this applies to uh, acetaminophen toxicity. We'll then discuss the clinical presentation and finally the treatment for acetaminophen toxicity. Acetaminophen is one of the most commonly used analgesics and antipyretics today. It is in many over-the-counter medications as well as in many prescription medications in combination with various opioids. Because of this, in addition to acetaminophen toxicity, you must consider toxicity from other medications in acute and chronic congestions. Many consider acetaminophen to be a benign medication. However, it is the most common cause of acute fulminant liver failure in the United States today. In overdose, it can be fatal, cause hepatic necrosis, and fulminant liver failure that requires transplantation. Acetaminophen is rapidly absorbed by the GI tract. 97% is metabolized by the liver, and the remaining 3% is excreted unchanged in the urine. Of the 97% metabolized by the liver, 94% goes through either glucuronidation or sulfation and then gets excreted in the urine. The remaining 3% is metabolized by the P450 system to a metabolite called NAPKI. Uh, this is the metabolite that causes the hepatotoxicity seen in acetaminophen overdose. NAPKI is rapidly metabolized by glutathione in the liver to non-toxic metabolites which get excreted in the urine. When acetaminophen is ingested in large doses, the metabolism of NAPKI depletes glutathione stores. When glutathione levels reach 30% or less, the hepatotoxic effects of NAPKI begin to take place. Patients with chronic liver disease, malnutrition, or alcoholism are much more sensitive to the effects of NAPKI, and hepatotoxicity can be seen in lower dose ingestions of acetaminophen. This is mainly because these patients are deficient in glutathione. The clinical presentation takes place in four stages. Stage one presents with very nonspecific constitutional and GI symptoms, which can make the diagnosis especially challenging if the patient does not volunteer information on an acetaminophen ingestion. This stage lasts for up to 24 hours post-ingestion. Stage 2, the hepatotoxic effects of NAPKI begin. Clinical hepatitis develops with rising liver enzymes, right upper quadrant pain, and right upper quadrant tenderness on exam. Typically, blood levels of acetaminophen are low at this point because it has been completely metabolized. Serum drug tests test only for acetaminophen and not the metabolites of acetaminophen. This stage is seen between 24 hours and 48 hours post-ingestion. Stage 3 is the point of maximum toxicity. Liver enzymes peak at 10 to 20,000. Other causes of acute hepatitis, such as viruses and alcohol, usually do not result in a profound uh, transaminitis like acetaminophen toxicity. Other signs of liver failure also begin to appear, such as encephalopathy or coagulopathy. This is typically seen days three and four post-ingestion. Stage four is either a recovery phase with return of normal liver function and no long-term damage, or a stage where patients go into fulminant hepatic failure and can require transplantation. This stage lasts up to two weeks post-ingestion. Typically, acetaminophen toxicity takes place in ingestions that are greater than 150 milligrams per kilogram in children and greater than 7.5 to 10 grams in adults. 
When deciding if treatment with N-acetylcysteine, which is the antidote, is necessary, we use the RUMAC Matthew nomogram. This nomogram is based on the acetaminophen level at four hours or greater post ingestion, as well as the half life of acetaminophen. Luckily, acetaminophen uh, overdose does have an antidote, which is the mainstay of treatment. This is N acetylcysteine or NAC for short. This is metabolized to precursor glutathione, which can then be used to metabolize the toxic napki. It is 100% effective if given within eight hours of ingestion, making this diagnosis especially time sensitive. Gastric lavage and the use of Epikec to induce vomiting are no longer recommended, uh, mainly because of the risk of aspiration and uh, causing a pneumonitis. GI decontamination with activated charcoal can be used in large ingestions and if the patient presents within two hours. This is the RUMAC Matthew nomogram. It is based on a level of acetaminophen at four hours or greater and the half life of acetaminophen. So this nomogram is divided into three areas. The area above line one represents probable toxicity. If the patient falls above this line on their acetaminophen level, they will likely go on to develop hepatotoxicity, and all these patients should be started on NAC therapy. The area below line two represents no toxicity and patients that should not go on to develop hepatotoxicity from NAPKI. So these patients do not need to be treated. The area between line Lines 1 and 2 is kind of a gray zone, or on the case of this diagram, a pink zone. Uh, this is the area of possible toxicity. It's the standard of care in the United States to initiate NAC therapy in patients that fall in this, this area, and then to trend their liver enzymes and their coagulation studies. Keep in mind that uh, patients with alcoholism, malnutrition, and chronic liver disease can have toxic ingestions at, at lower doses. So if those patients aren't in the possible or probable toxicity uh, levels, you might want to also still consider treating them with N-acetylcysteine. So basically, NAC should be administered in three situations. The first is a patient that falls in the possible or probable toxicity areas. The second is when a patient has taken a large dose of acetaminophen. The time of ingestion is unknown, but your serum acetaminophen level is elevated. And the third would be a patient that reports a large ingestion, but not a toxic ingestion, but also reports using acetaminophen over a long period of time. These patients should have a level checked, and if, if it's elevated, or the liver enzymes are elevated, then they should be treated with, with N-acetylcysteine as well. There are currently two forms of, of NAC that are approved by the FDA, oral and IV. Uh, just be aware that the oral version smells like rotten eggs, and most patients don't tolerate it very well. In summary, acetaminophen is not a benign medication it can have devastating and sometimes fatal consequences. NAPKI is the hepatotoxic metabolite in acetaminophen overdose. The clinical presentation can be very subtle initially and easily confused with alternate diagnoses, but is one that needs to be made because of the time-sensitive nature of treatment. N-acetylcysteine is the antidote and is 100% effective if given within eight hours post-ingestion. Therapy with and acetylcysteine is guided by the RUMAC Matthew nomogram, so always reference this. And uh, once you have your four hour acetaminophen level. Thank you very much.